Um, hi, Edward. How are you doing today? Hi, Dylan. So I wanted to ask you a few questions about Frank O'Hara to start. Um, basically, do you remember when you met him and what he was like? Yeah, I was at Yaddo <laughs> and um, feeling very disturbed because I had left my uh, therapy group mm -hmm. uh, shortly before. Mm -hmm. And I, there I was facing the real world. And I saw his poems in a poetry magazine mm -hmm. and I read them to the assembled company in the drawing room, which we, we used to meet before dinner. And uh, I, so I read them the poems from Poetry Magazine. They all started screaming and hated them. Everybody hated them. And uh, they were all so new and outrageous. And mm -hmm. it was a d whole different world. Outrage, the poems were outrageous. And they simply couldn't accept them. It was too new. And um, I wrote him a fan letter. And he invited me to a poetry reading at an art gallery. Egan, the Egan Gallery. And so when I got out of Yaddo, I went to the reading, and um, he was reading with John Ashbery. Mm -hmm. And they both read very romantic poems about Venice. They obviously had a wonderful time and were s stunned by Venice, which of course everyone is. And afterwards, um, I went up and introduced myself, and we just clicked, and it was like um, he saved my life when I was floundering without my therapy group and job or anything. I had nothing. I was completely adrift. So then I uh, stayed with him. I, we had a very brief uh, affair, actually. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was really marvelous because he showed me how a gay man could live in New York uh, without... Uh, all this sturm und drang and misery and he just lived he built his he had his friends and his interests and um, i mean i wasn't much interested in the, that school of painters mm -hmm. he was i was from the old days more of the 30s i was still hung up in the 30s with um, uh, socialism and art should be responsible and in fact i had even tried to be a, a poet of the working class by getting jobs in factories and warehouses. So I did all that uh, stuff and it really wasn't for me, but it was interesting. You said you were too tired from working in the factory to write. Uh, after five and a half days, because you didn't just work five days, and starting at seven in the morning, and uh, which meant I had to get up way before dawn to get uh, to work. Mm -hmm. and. But there, Frank was in a whole other world, uh, liberated from all of this uh, heavy... I was having trouble writing, actually, and because I really couldn't live up to my own ideals. So he showed me you don't have to have any... You just have to write. And you start writing and stop writing. You get an idea, put it down, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be more than that. And it uh, doesn't have to live up to anything. Uh, so we had a, several months of uh, where I met his whole world, which was mm -hmm. quite interesting. They were up and they felt they were up and comers. They were taking over the art world. Mm -hmm. He had actor friends, playwrights, directors, uh, art gallery directors, uh, museum curators, uh, other poets. Amazing variety of uh, people all feeling very important to be around Frank O'Hara. And he was the center. John Ashbery definitely was second fiddle. Um, I always thought that John Ashbery left for Paris because his psychiatrist, he had talked to his psychiatrist about, everybody was in analysis mm -hmm. back then, of course. Um, and um, leaving for Paris, leaving for France, he got a fellowship, I think was one way of escaping this second second place. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he became tops once he started publishing. Well, then also Frank died, Frank O'Hara died so young, right? But he died much later. Yeah. It was all, John was already, because Frank didn't publish when he was alive, mm -hmm. hardly anything. Mm -hmm. He never sent out work. He did a couple of chapbooks, though, right? Uh, he had... Um, 
Lunch Poems, published yeah. by City Lights Press, but that was a very minor press. I Notes in the, the em Emergency Book. I can't remember the name. Notes in Emergency I did that come in next? Was it Grove Press? I think it might have been 1960-ish. Yeah, that was later. I mean, this was all the 50s. Mm -hmm. and, um, he, uh, so he taught me how you live in New York. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he went through a bad crisis, a crisis of his own. Uh, something to do with drugs, which I knew nothing about. You know, he was very much involved with Larry Rivers. They were mm -hmm. old lovers. And, um, Apparently, Larry Rivers and Larry Rivers had wives, but whenever his wife left him, there was Frank, yeah. like his fallback, mm -hmm. uh, his default lover. And it, I was a couple of months, I guess, and then in the summer, it happened when Frank was going to um, visit uh, Larry Rivers. No, uh, there was another friend. Uh, watercolor painter. Very Fairfield nice. Porter. Fairfield Porter. He was going to visit Fairfield Porter in the Hamptons and he checked a, a bag of stuff in Pennsylvania Station with notebooks in it and uh, correspondence. He said that when he came back from the weekend it was gone. They had cleaned out the lockers early. And he said he was very disturbed because he had talked in the letters about drugs. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was vulnerable. But I think there must have been drugs in the bag. And of course the letters would have his name and address if any letters were addressed to him. Mm -hmm. I think he must have had drugs in the bag. I never knew him to take any. He was really a drinker. But um, it was really okay. I was okay with it. It didn't have to go on. I didn't really like that world. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel part of it ever, ever. What, what problems did you have with the circle or the world? Uh, partly it was because I was part of an uh, still connected to the 30s and the lefty, that sort of, there was sort of morality. I don't know, maybe it was being, it wasn't that they, there are plenty of Jews in that world, but there's something about being a Jew that in the world you can't not be serious about mm -hmm. about the world. After all, look what has happened, or the history, and um, you can't just say, oh, now we're divorced from the history, we can just go ahead and paint abstract paintings that don't mean anything, um, just write nonsense poems. I couldn't do that. I mean, I couldn't belong to that world. Not all of them did, actually. Um, Jane Freilicker painted realist paintings, mm -hmm. and they liked Herman Rose's work, mm -hmm. who was one of my best friends. Um, he, he was a painter of cityscapes. The realist, just, I mean, he was a, sort of a, a leftist painter, right? Oh, like yes, and he was actually, he was older than me, so he had been very much involved in the Communist Party in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And yet they liked him. I mean, they really, but because he was such a painter, I mean, every brush stroke was considered a really quite extraordinary. And so I didn't really belong with that. And they believed that it was the, they sort of fell in with that Time Magazine corporate America shit that this is the American century mm -hmm. and this is the art of the American century. Mm -hmm. And it meant that abstract art was suddenly snapped up by corporations by the wagon load mm -hmm. and put in all the corporate headquarters. I couldn't identify with that. I mean, I, oh, another thing is, suddenly they were middle class. Mm -hmm. I was still from a poor family, from the lower. I, I felt like I was lower class, and I didn't really want to become this glossy corporate uh, poet. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't like that world at all. And in fact, I didn't even see where I fit in in the world. Uh, so I really was just as happy when it ended. And uh, he apparently had a cry. Well, I guess it was what it was was that he had a crisis over that uh, loss of the stuff in the locker in Penn Station. Mm -hmm. He really did flip a little bit, and I was. You know, I was there, a uh, semi-dependent help 
No, not dependent. I was, um, well, I was sort of dependent on him because he was showing, he was my, like my leader, showing mm -hmm. me the way. Uh, it was, um, it was not, it was all right that it was over. I had my own world, my own friends. Um, I understand this.